All right, let's look at five more trees in this set. Um, in this set, we're going to look at the Sweet Bay Magnolia, the Southern Magnolia, the Persimmon, the Eastern Hop Hornbeam, and the American Hornbeam. So we'll get started with the Southern Magnolia. All right, the Southern Magnolia is evergreen, which means it's going to keep its leaves all year round. When you're looking at the leaf itself, you can see right here, we've got that real dark green, um, glossy look on the top side of the leaf and the underside is going to be like a rusty brown color uh, like you can see on that leaf. Okay, The leaf itself is going to be 5 to 10 inches in length and 2 to 3 inches wide. Okay, Again I said it had that pointy tip and that bright green coloration on it. Okay, When looking at the fruit you're going to see an egg-shaped burr it looks like this. This is in the younger year's growth. Um, as it matures, it'll start browning out. Um, the seeds will kind of open up, and you'll see the seeds sticking in this fruit. Um, and eventually, it'll turn black and, and drop. Um, the seeds will eventually turn reddish in color um, from a, a brownish color that they initially started with, green to brown to, to that reddish color. Okay. So the Southern Magnolia's scientific name is Magnolia grandiflora. Okay, so very commonly seen tree um, in the South and in landscape plantings. The Southern Magnolia is known for that big, beautiful white flower um, that's very fragrant that people love um, and use for different floral designs and things like that. Um, but the Southern Magnolia, Magnolia grandiflora, or large flower. Okay, up next, let's look at the Sweet Bay Magnolia. This tree is typically smaller in height than the Southern Magnolia, um, but Magnolia Virginiana is the scientific name. The leaves are going to be four to six inches long, um, can be up to two to three inches wide. You can see they're shiny and green above with a more silvery or white underside or at least palish green if anything else um, on the underside of the leaf. Um, they have also cup shaped flowers that look like the southern magnolia that are white in color um, but they are going to be smaller and of course it'll have a small burr as a fruit as well. So magnolia virginiana this is going to be your Sweet Bay Magnolia, also popular in landscape um, plantings as a smaller feature tree. Third, let's look at persimmon. All right, persimmon's scientific name is Diospirus virginiana. Um, when we look at the persimmon, you can see that dark green glossy leaf on the top side. Uh, the leaf is going to be two to six inches long and one to th three inches in width. Okay, so the persimmon um, can grow up to 70 feet tall, um, but is a nice tree uh, found native in Georgia. You can see it's going to have a pointed tip. It's also going to have smooth margins. Okay, so we've seen some with smooth margins like the black gum um, and other trees. But these smooth margins, coupled with a, another distinct feature of the persimmon when looking at it, um, is the fact that it aborts its terminal bud. Okay, so the terminal bud being the bud on the very tip of the leaf that controls um, height growth in trees, um, or the, in this case, the branches growing out uh, lengthwise um, farther and farther, it aborts that bud. So if you look carefully here, you can see where there is a dead twig here, all right? You can see it on this one as well, that dead twig where growth is just stopped and it has aborted that terminal bud. Um, again, on this one right here, um, it's a little harder to see, but there is a stem right next to that bud um, and that has been aborted. So that will help you distinguish if you can see that when looking at leaf sprays for identification or just the whole tree itself will help you distinguish that persimmon. When you look up and down the leaf it also has these tiny little black buds as well um, that help you kind of see that. 
Okay, another feature of the persimmon, um, it's good to have some of these around your deer stand. Um, of course, this tree is dioecious, meaning that it has separate male and female trees, so you need a male to help pollinate or fertilize the female tree in order to get fruit. But when you look at the fruit, it's almost like um, a miniature orange or like an orange plum. Um, you can see this green fruit here will eventually grow a little larger. It'll turn orange, and as it turns orange, that ripens up, um, and it'll be pretty good. These are edible, so you can't eat these, um, and then you'll see the seed inside. All right, so this is persimmon. Remember, that's Diospirus virginiana for the scientific name on persimmon. All right, up next, we have the eastern hop hornbeam. We're going to look at the two hornbeams next. This is the eastern hop be hornbeam. So, Australia virginiana. Okay, the first thing you need to notice when you're looking at this leaf is it's going to have a very fuzzy texture. Okay, that's going to denote it from the American hornbeam that we'll look at in a minute. So, that fuzzy leaf, okay, they're going to be ovate. So a little bit wider near the tip than they were at the base. It's still going to have that accumulator pointed tip, okay? They'll be pale green in color, so paler than, say, um, an American elm. Um, some people will confuse this with. So that pale green in color um, and hairy on the top and the bottom, okay? They have nearly straight parallel veins when looking at these. Um, and then eventually they'll have fruits and clusters, um, cone-like clusters that are also hop-like. And there, that's how it gets its name, the Eastern Hop Hornbeam. So that's one other feature. And you'll see those catkins, um, those pollen catkins that are hanging down that release the pollen certain times of the year, um, typically in threes. Uh, when you look at the bark, it's going to have a shredded-like bark appearance to the eastern hop hornbeam as well. So again, the eastern hop hornbeam, Australia virginiana. Okay, let's look at the American hornbeam. All right, Carpanus caroliniana is the scientific name. Okay, again, the first thing you'll notice, the leaves look pretty similar. Um, I know I always struggle with the hornbeams in identification um, because the leaves look similar. Uh, when you're seeing them, but a lot smoother leaf on the American hornbeam as opposed to the eastern hop hornbeam, okay? Um, the leaves themselves, when you're looking, are two to four inches long and one and one three quarters inches wide, okay? So you can see um, this has kind of a smaller leaf, but it's also oval shaped, okay? And the margins are doubly serrated. The fruit on this is going to be a cluster of small nuts. Smaller nuts on the fruiting clusters for this. As you can see, this is the American hornbeam, Carpinus caroliniana. Okay, so let's review these real quick, what we've seen in this video. We've got Southern Magnolia, Magnolia grandiflora, large white flower. Again, you had that glossiness on the top with the cup-shaped leaf, a cup-shaped flower as well, um, rusty brown below, and then, of course, you've got the fruiting burr, the large fruiting burr on the southern magnolia. Up next, same genus. We've got that glossy, shiny leaf on the top side versus the silvery white on the underside smaller version of the Southern Magnolia. Um, this is the Sweet Bay Magnolia. All right, third, we saw this tree, dark glossy green on this one. Um, and you can see the fruiting body itself right now hadn't turned in colors, but will be orange. Again, the distinguishing feature for this tree was that it aborts its terminal bud. Okay, so you're gonna have those dead twigs at the end, you can see it really well right there, okay? This is persimmon, Diospirus 
virginiana. And then we have the fuzzier of the two hornbeams. Um, if it's got that fuzzy leaf, then you know that it is the eastern hop hornbeam, okay, with those parallel veins somewhat straight, okay, but that darker green leaf, acuminate tip, ovate leaf shape, eastern hop hornbeam, and then the smoother of the two hornbeams is going to be the American hornbeam. So you feel that leaf, it feels smooth, it looks like a hornbeam, you ought to call that American hornbeam. All right, that makes this five leaves. See you next time.